<laughs> okay, hold up your Bible if you would, please, and repeat this with me. This is God's Word, and I hold in my hand. Upon God's Word, I take my stand. I can have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. I am what it says I am, and I will do what it tells me to do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. If you meant that, give Jesus a praise clap offering. All righty. Uh, this morning, I'm, I'm going to be uh, talking about uh, biblical truths for a great marriage here in just a moment. But uh, this kind of goes along with uh, uh, the marriage theme this morning. And uh, Harry and Barbara's marriage has been on the rocks for a while. So when they hear about a marriage seminar being given in their neighborhood, they decide to attend. One of the most important things in marriage, said the speaker, is to really know your spouse well. For example, continued the speaker, how many of you know what your wife's favorite type of flower is? Harry leaned over to Barbara and whispered, it's gold medal all-purpose flower, isn't it? <laughs> I know for some of you that went right over your head, but I'm... <laughs> Buddy, you just messed up if you think that's your wife's favorite flower. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, uh, just one more little quick funny right quick kind of go along with that because I, 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 I like uh, humor to go along somewhat with uh, the message that I'm doing. And I've shared this one before, but it's, it's worthy of it again because it kind of goes along with uh, uh, maybe sometimes this is what has happened in relationships. They, they tend to drift apart sometimes. Little elderly man, little elderly lady riding along in the pickup, driving down the road. Suddenly there was a young couple come flying by them, past them. The girl is plumb over next to the guy and, and it's almost like it's taken two of them to drive that car. They're sitting so close together. The little old lady, she looks over at her husband and she says, I remember whenever we used to ride down the road like that. The little old man looked back at her and he says, I hadn't went nowhere. <laughs> Ladies, you might want to move over a little bit here. I don't know. But anyway, turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 2 this morning. And uh, boy, I just tell you, I couldn't get away from this. The Lord just kept leading me back to this and pressing upon me that this was the time. Timing is everything, ladies and gentlemen, with God. It really is. And uh, you'll, you'll, you'll discover that to be more relevant as your life goes on. But uh, even in ministry, it's timing. And, and you've got to be sensitive to where God is leading you to uh, in ministry. And it's certainly uh, of utmost importance for me as a pastor to, to listen in my heart what I believe God is directing me to, to go to. And even though this is a very familiar passage of Scripture, I've preached on it time and time again throughout my time in, in ministry. Uh, this was one of those times that this is, I know that I know that this is God's message for this morning's service that He gave me for this service. So I pray that, that you'll be sensitive to uh, how the Lord wants to speak to your heart this morning because there'll be some of you say here, Well, Brother David, I didn't come here to listen to a marriage sermon. You'll be surprised what nuggets you're going to find in here that will pertain to you even if you're single, okay? Because invariably, what makes uh, for a great spouse, uh, whether, you're, whether you're married now or hope to be married somewhere down the road, you're going to find what I share with you this morning can really lay a strong foundation in your life to be the, the person that God needs you to be, uh, either in your marriage or perhaps in the upcoming uh, future that you would become married, okay? So let's read this, if we will, beginning in chapter 2, verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helpmeet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept and took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man... 
leave his father and mother and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh and they were both naked, the man and his wife and they were not ashamed. Let us pray. Father in heaven, I thank you this morning once again for this opportunity to stand here behind this sacred desk and Lord to deliver a message of insight and inspiration to your people. God, I just pray for an outpouring of the of the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be upon the, the reading, the hearing, the preaching of the word. And Lord God, that you might help us to uh, be the men and women of God that you'd have us to be. And Lord, I pray that uh, that if there's anybody here this morning, Lord, that needs the salvation of the Lord, I pray that they too would be uh, of utmost sensitive this morning. That Lord, that they might receive the the word of faith here as well. Uh, to understand that this is a great opportunity for them to be united with you. So, Lord, I just pray that uh, you would have your will to be done now in each one of our lives. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you put your hand over your heart? Let's say this prayer to our Heavenly Father. Father in heaven, speak to my heart and change my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much for saying that prayer with me. I'd like to draw your attention back to verse 18. Because this is where we're going to... Uh, find perhaps uh, the foundation, if you will, the beginning of of, of a great marriage uh, relationship. And I'm talking about biblical truths for a great marriage here this morning. Verse number 18, it starts out, And the Lord God said, and I'll stop right there, because to me this is this is what really establishes the whole basis of, of a person having a great marriage. And I believe it is this, a great marriage will have a clear and present understanding of, of lordship cause the lord god the lord god said see this is to me is where the the whole beginning of having a great relationship uh is got to start if you're going to have the kind of relationship with uh, an individual that you hope to have as your spouse or if you're married and you have a spouse or someone that you're going to one day uh you god uh, get you into a situation to where that you can uh, make that decision to to ask somebody to be your spouse. Uh, you know, it, it, it's a it's a beautiful thing. It really is. But here, to me, is where we have to, uh, if you will, qualify uh, lordship, because that's what this is really talking about. The Lord God said, because. I believe that that what really made a defining difference for me in my personal relationship with my wife Joy was whenever I came to a place of where I didn't just know Jesus as a Savior, but I knew Him as a Lord. Someone that ruled and reigned over my life. This is where you've got to to come to a place of, of recognizing this is one of the great things that God reveals to us about about Lord is is you got You got to get to this place to where that you hear what the Lord says and you do what the Lord says. See, there's a there's a big difference. Really, there truly is between knowing Jesus as Savior and knowing Him as your Lord. In fact, if you will look over your Bible, if you will, to Luke chapter six. Turn there in your Bible, right quick, if you will, and listen to what the Lord Jesus says here in these scripture verses, right here. And you'll and and it'll clarify very clearly the importance of knowing Jesus as Lord. Okay, and and you've got to get to this understanding. It's not just lip service. You say, "Oh, I know Jesus as my Lord." Well, let's let's see if we really qualify that. Okay, Let, let's look, if we will, in verse number 46 of Luke chapter 6. Jesus says, And why call ye me, Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me, and heareth my sayings, and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house, and digged deep, and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood rose, the stream beat vehemently upon the house, upon that house, and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that is without a foundation, built a house upon the earth, against which the storm did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. The context of the scripture shows me clearly. That Jesus is trying to say, whenever you hear and whenever you do what I'm telling you, your house is going to be strong. 
See, this is, to me, is what really clearly defines lordship in an individual's life. I've got to come to this place of saying, just like Jesus said, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not what I say? See, God starts off this, and the Lord God said. This defines, to me, very clearly, the importance of knowing the Lord and His Lordship rights over our lives. As I said, I believe that my marriage took a dramatic turn in 1984 when I returned to the Lord at the age of 29. I'd been running from God for 16 years of my life from the age of 13 to the age of 29. But whenever I returned to the Lord, and I love that song, you know, whenever Dave was singing that earlier song, you remember when Jesus loves me? You know, you pushed him away. I'm telling you, we we tend to do that sometimes because we 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 don't want to do what Jesus tells us to do out of the Word. And I, so I'd been running from God for 16 years of my life. But whenever God got a hold of me in 1984 and I surrendered my will to His, Lordship became very evident in my life. Because I not only heard what Jesus said, I began to do what He told me. And guess what? I was the beneficiary of a much better marriage. Guys, I'm telling you, this, is a, this can be a defining moment where that we start realizing... I need to start listening to what God says and doing what He says. And I promise you, your life individually, or rather you are united with someone in marriage, I'm telling you, your life is going to take on a special meaning. Because you you are hearing from God on how I'm supposed to love this person, how I'm supposed to respect this person, how I'm supposed to, uh, to do what I'm supposed to do with this person, and it'll make you a much better person. If I, you know, without, without, throwing anything out there other than just this question. Have you ever been in a relationship that got terminated? Either through a a, a divorce or just a, you know, you were dating somebody and you broke off and you decided, no, that's not going to work. If you look back and ask yourself very honestly, were you and and the other person, were you you honoring God with your life? See, this, this to me is where we have to come to. Because we, we need to understand the importance of involving the Lord. I need to have a relationship with God that is a surrendered will on my part. God, I'll do what you want me to do. I'll live the way you want me to live. And I pray this morning that you'll see that this can be, if you will, the, 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 the thing that God throws out there this morning that He's wanting to save your marriage. He's wanting to save your relationships by bringing you closer to Him to where you listen to what He's got to say and that you honor Him in your life. See, I'm I'm just understanding this more and more in my own life that whenever God speaks to my heart about forgiving somebody, do we always see eye to eye with our spouse? No. No. But the idea here is, is we've got to come to understand that I don't let my flesh take over and I say, I'm going to courthouse, I'm filing for a divorce. You've got to come to this place of saying, you know what, I, I have to start listening to how God wants me to respond to this. And I have, to, I have to show this love and this forgiveness. And so maybe today is going to be a place in your life that you look at and you ask very honestly, have I yielded my life to the Lord? Have I made Him truly the Lord of my life? Am I listening to Him? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing in this relationship? Not only with you and God, but with you and this special person that you have in your life. And I pray that you'll come to understand this is, this is to me very important where we look at it and the Lord God said. It wasn't a personal preference. It's not what the preacher so much said. It's about what does God's word tell you to, on how to, to have a relationship with this person. And if you'll start listening to God and doing what God wants you to do, friend, I promise you can have a great relationship with, with your spouse. You really, truly can. And I pray that you are. I pray that you do have a great relationship with your spouse and that you'll honor God always in all the days of your life. But let's move on. Let's look at verse 18 even more closely now, if you will. Also, it says here, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet for him. You know, I looked at this, and I know that a great marriage was meant to be God's cure for loneliness. A great marriage. A great marriage was meant to be God's cure for loneliness. God said it's not good for you to be alone. 
Well, if it's not good for a man to be alone, it's not good for the woman to be alone. And God, God saw the dilemma. You know, I've seen, a lot of, I've seen a lot of people that are married that are lonely. You see, here's the thing. He said, I'm going to make him a helpmate. Now, I'm not trying to be too forward here, but I'm just trying to get you, I'm trying to define something very clearly in your mind. Because unfortunately, most of the time, whenever uh, men and women get together, it tends to be more along the lines of, of driven by the flesh. Okay? And what God wants us to realize here is, is there's got to be, there's got to be an understanding here of, of the real meaning here. Is God was trying to get companionship. He was trying to get somebody into, into Adam's life that would be a companion to him. Not sex. That came later on. God wanted somebody to be a companion to Adam. I want to ask you men this morning, is your wife your companion? Do you, have you opened up and understood that she needs to talk with you? She needs that sitting in the easy chair this day after day and letting weeks, months, years of your life go by. And isn't it odd how that she and you can both talk to everybody else in and in and around you and your relationships and yet you can't talk with one another. I think it's important this morning that we define that this is what God's primary goal was for wanting to bring Adam a wife. Was he wanted him to have a wife. Someone that would be a companion. Someone he would communicate with. How many marriages could be healed today? How many marriages could be, be revived today? Literally. If husbands and wives would understand the meaning of talking with one another. Guys, when was the last time you involved your, your wife in what you're doing? Do you see? He said, I'll make, her, make, make you a help meet. Isn't it amazing how many guys have got stuff that they do, but their wife is left out? You know, I just want to encourage you guys to, to come to understand that, that God meant for you to do things together. I'm not opposed to you going out with your buddies and you girls going out with your girlfriends and, and doing what y'all like. But ultimately what we got to do is we got to come back to the primary relationship that God brought you into here is with your spouse. And God wants you to communicate with them. God wants you to spend time with them doing things that will build stronger relationships. You know, it's been well said that even children spell love, T-I-M-E. They do. The child knows how much you love them by how much time you'll spend with them. Well, so does your spouse. Your spouse equates that the same way, how much time you spend with them. In a very good way. Where that you're communicating, you're, you're sharing your hopes and your dreams, and even your fears if need be. And, and I know people say, oh, you shouldn't say that. Well, Paul said they're fighting without and fears within. It's amazing how sometimes we just need somebody we can confide in. Somebody that we can have confidence in. Somebody that will, will if you will, have my six. Somebody that will have my back. I, I can tell you this right now. Out of all the people on this planet, I believe I can talk to Joy about anything that goes on in my life. Out of all the people on this planet. And that's okay. Because, ladies and gentlemen, that's okay with her. That if I've got... If I've got difficulties going on in my life, I've got decisions that are going on, I can go and I can sit down and, 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 and I share things and I talk with her. And sometimes it's with tears rolling down my cheeks that I share things. I'm just saying, you've got to be yourself. You've got to learn that it's okay for you to be real with one another. Because that's what God meant for Eve to be to Adam as somebody that would be there that he could, he could speak to and she could speak to him. And today may be the day that you come to terms with that, that you understand that, that this, is the, this was God's cure for loneliness. Let's not be like two ships passing in the night and let years of our life go by that we never really get to know this person that we are in this wonderful thing that's called marriage with. Let us come to understand that the, one of the primary reasons, listen to this, you got to get to where that you, you, you do things together that you become compatible. In fact, whenever you go, if, if, if somebody goes down to the courthouse down here and files for, for, for a divorce down there at the courthouse, 
Do you know the number one thing that is written down in a divorce decree? It's called lack of incompatibility. What? What are you talking about? Simply put, that simply means lack of communication. In other words, we're, we're not able to talk anymore. We're broke. I'm telling you right now, ladies and gentlemen, do not make the mistake of thinking that your spouse doesn't like to talk to you. They do. But I can tell you this. Sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Come to this place of being able to sit down without it going to the next level of getting angry. Okay? If there's some issues that you need to talk about, some things you got to get out on the table, get them out on the table, sit down and let's talk about it. See if we can't bring some, some unity back into our home. Bring some, some, some confidence back into your relationship with your spouse. You say, this is how I know we're supposed to do this. We're supposed to have open lines of communication. And so I pray that you'll understand that this is important, that you learn to do things together. Guys, when's the last time you took you, your wife out? Hmm? On a date night. Hopefully you've done it recently. I was talking with Brother Lester over there a while ago. You know what he and Sister Anita done? He took her fishing. <laughs> they didn't catch no fish, but they went fishing. You know what? Maybe that's what would help some. If you'd find some little something, it's not the idea that you're going to get so much, the fish, but it's the idea that they went together to do something. Would you guys please do something this year? Do things together. One of my favorite things to do is get in the automobile and go for a sightseeing tour with Joy. I like just going and seeing. And, uh, you know, it's just me and her riding down the highway. And that's okay. And I just hope that you guys will understand that God made Eve to be a companion, to be a helpmate, get her involved. I got Joy involved helping me work calves out there one day and, and I realized, you know, she was doing her best, but I'm not sure which was scared her, the calf or her. But uh, I was trying to work the head gate and I was just needing her to bring the calf up there and it was, I wish that we'd had it on video. It was so hilarious to me. But uh, you know what? In spite of her own personal concerns about what this calf might do to her if it turned around and run back her way, she was out there trying to help me. See, she was out there. And so I'm just, I want to encourage you guys once again, get to this place that you understand that this thing called loneliness is not just for an individual. Sometimes it's in the marriage. It's couples are together and they're lonely. And it's all because they will not listen to what God says about communicating, about involving each other in their lives and helping one another. One of the things that I do around the house, and I know people say, Brother David, you're meddling. But I want to tell you something, guys. You're not too good to make the bed. You're not too good to get your hands in the dishwater. And if you think that you are, think about this. If she wasn't there with you, you'd be doing all that stuff by yourself. Okay? So learn to pitch in and help out, okay? Learn to pitch in and help out. And, and because, listen... The day that your wife ever feels like she's been turned into everybody's personal maid, she'll be done. She needs to know that she's appreciated and that you're willing to pitch in and help. So I want to encourage you guys, pitch in and help. Okay? All right. Thirdly, let's go on to verse 22 right quick. Look here. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman and brought her unto the man. The third thing about a great marriage, a great marriage has faith in the divine providence of the Lord. God put Adam into a deep sleep and he took a rib from his side and he made the woman and the Bible says he brought her to the man. I'm going to tell you something this morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a firm believer in this. I thank God for my salvation this morning. I think it's the greatest gift that I'll ever have. It's my salvation in the Lord. I praise God for my salvation. But let me tell you something. Right next to that is I am thankful for the gift that my wife is to me. Okay? Out of the over 6 billion people that's on this planet now, I need you to get a new appreciation out of all the people in this world that God brought to you you need to be thankful that you have been given this precious gift that's called your spouse. 
If you're married this morning, you need to really get a fresh vision of this was no accident. Okay? How many of you believe that God is in control? Say amen. amen. He is. I believe it's important for us to get a new vision of the person that we have in our life that we call a spouse. If you're married, and I'm, I'm qualifying that with that. But if God brings this man to the woman, or the woman to the man in this case, I pray that you'd understand that it was no mistake that God brought Eve to, to Adam. And I would pray this morning that you would open up your eyes to the reality that God can bring the right person into your life. Now I want to speak to the singles here this morning that's unfortunately uh, went through the trauma of either death or divorce. Okay? Because that's a very real thing. It happens. And it's regrettable. I wish it didn't happen, but it does. The worst thing that can happen in life for somebody that suffered the loss of a loved one prematurely, either through death or divorce, is now they're going through life single. Okay? And they're just going through life and, you know, they're, they're trying to make some sense of life and it's hard. It's kind of like, uh, like that song we were singing there for a while ago. There was a time in, in life that you were angry and you were confused. You're like, I don't understand, God, what happened? Okay? And that's, 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 that's okay that you feel that way. But I'm telling you, Jesus still loves us. And what he wants us to do is not build an invisible wall around our hearts and say, I'm never letting anybody else in. You see, I want you to open up and realize this morning, God made you to be a vessel of love. He filled you with his presence by his Holy Spirit. And God needs you to open up your heart and believe that in spite of the tragedy of death or divorce, God needs you to go on and be the sociable human being that he made you to be. That loving person that God made you. Because if we allow death or divorce to isolate us, to put us in a prison of darkness and loneliness, anger, bitterness, then in fact the devil wins. See, what you've got to realize is, is the devil is trying to, if you will, isolate you to where that you're not you're not into this divine providence thing of the Lord. But I believe with all of my heart that God can bring a person into your life that will be the person that God wanted them to be in your life. And I'm sorry for death and and, and divorce that comes along and, and takes people away. I wish it didn't happen. But I'm telling you right now, do not fall into that, that, that grand canyon of, of, of bitterness and anger. Don't get into that state of nobody loves me, nobody wants me. Don't get mad at God. Come back over here and say, Lord, I'm going, I'm going to put myself out there. And I'm not going to let that invisible wall come up around my life and keep me from, from allowing you to bring the right person into my life. You know, I love this, this little analogy that I'm about to give you here because out of all the parts of the body that God could have chose, He chose the rib. And I've often used this as an analogy here to help you to understand the rib taken from under the arm for protection. Guys, can I tell you something this morning? God needs you to protect your spouse. He truly does. That rib is protected by the arm. I've often said this, that I don't know that it ever come to this, but I'll, I'll just put it out there. I, this is my firm conviction. If somebody broke into my home with, with, with bad intentions of harming my wife, I would do whatever was necessary to protect her, even if it cost me my life. I don't think that'll ever come to pass. I don't think I'll ever be put in that situation. But I want to tell you guys something very real here this morning. The worst bad man that you could ever think of trying to come against your wife will not compare to Satan. And I promise you the old devil will try to come against you and your spouse. Guys, I want to encourage you to be the spiritual head of your family. 
I want you to pray for your wife. I want you to be the, the, the person that, that understands about putting on the whole armor of God and, and serve notice to the powers of darkness. You'll not lay a hand to my spouse. Learn to pray for your spouse and learn, learn to stand in the gap for them, the importance of it. Man, I want to encourage you to be that, that protector, if you will. And that you would, you, would, you would honor God in this, in this relationship that you'd understand. That God brought you a very precious gift, gentlemen. If you're married here this morning, gentlemen, you need to look at this, this wonderful person that you now call your wife. You look at them through eyes of love and devotion. That you look at them and you say, thank God he brought you into my life. I think that, that Proverbs said it best in Proverbs 18.21. This is such a powerful thing. It says, Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. Look at that. Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. I just love that. Because I guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen, whenever, I, whenever the Lord brought joy into my life up there at Oak Mogey, and, you know, we, 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 we would eventually uh, move from the, just the acquaintance and the friendship to the place of where we decided we wanted to, to get married. You know, I look, at, I look back at that and I say, boy, howdy, there's no doubt in my mind. I mean, she started out from Marlowe, Oklahoma. I started out from a little place in southeastern Oklahoma called Ferris. And, and, and we leave out and you know what? We were headed for the same location up there at a place called Oak Mogey, going through that trade school up there. In 1972. And we would meet up there and later on, like I say, get married. And here we are all these years later. Divine providence of the Lord. I'm, 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 there's no doubt in my mind that God directed her to go up there. He directed me to get up there and he needed us to meet. Because I've often told people I wasn't born in Marlowe, but I was born to be here. And God got me here through that little girl called Joy Elaine McCauley at the time. You know, whenever I saw her, I saw her with them wingtip boots on, them, them hip hugger pants and that body shirt. I mean, my cowboy hat about spun around on my head. I said, my Lord, look at that. But you know what? As I've grown now in my relationship, can I tell you something? That was just the beginning of obtaining favor of the Lord. Because I am highly favored, ladies and gentlemen. I truly am. Because of that wonderful lady. I'll close with this last thought right here this morning. Verse number 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be uh, one flesh. And I'll stop right there. The final thing that I would say this morning, a great marriage will portray a loving example of loyalty. For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. Cleave, cleave, get a hold of it. Get a hold of your spouse and settle it in your heart. No matter what happens in the road of life, we're going to be all right. We're going we're to hold on to each other and we're going to make it through. You know, this is the thing that I think is such an important part of marriage. It's where you settle it in your heart, a conviction that I'm with this person till death do us part. Okay? Because I can assure you, shortly after what we're reading right here, the fall of man occurs, and this beautiful place called the Garden of Eden is about to become off limits to Adam and Eve. Because of their sin, of Adam's sin, and getting, they, they, they wind up getting booted out of, the, out of the, the Garden of Eden. And you know, I, I think that it would have been very easy for, for Adam and Eve to have been very upset with one another over this whole experience of letting the devil get in and, and mess with their minds and tempt them and deceive them and everything. And, and sometimes the devil gets in for, for that just that season of time and messes, tries to mess with your relationship and everything. But you know, Adam, he didn't tell Eve, get out of here, I'm done with you. Look here, you brought that fruit over here and I took of it, now look where we're at. No, they go on and they... They stay together. You see, life is going to be filled, and most of you already know this, life is going to be filled with a lot of trials and tribulations. There's going to be some tough times going to come down the road of your life. But that ain't the time to run to the courthouse and say, I'm quitting. 
It's the time that you guys cleave one to another all the more strongly. You get a hold of your spouse's hands and you, you look them right in the eye and say, I'm going to be here with you no matter what happens in life. And I'll tell you, if you've been, if you've been toying around with that, that thing about getting a divorce, I pray this morning you realize who's the author of that thought. That's the old devil. The devil trying to wreck your relationship. And I pray that you'd understand that this tough time that you may be going through right now, that's not the end of the story. It's really not the end of the story. you got to look back and realize God's brought you guys through some tough stuff, has He not? He'll bring you through this too if you just cleave on to one another. Hold on to one another and just, just know in your heart, this is the way it's supposed to be. You know, I've got to believe, out of all the, the ladies that's ever been on this planet, do you know I believe Eve probably was the most happiest lady of all that ever was? You know why that is? It's because she never had to hear her husband say, that ain't the way mama done it. <laughs> Guys, be careful with going there. Don't do that to your wife. But I hope that this next portion of Scripture in conclusion will bring us to, to, the, to the place that I believe that God wants us to be. I'd like for you to look in the book of Ephesians right quick if you would. Ephesians chapter 5, this is, I use this portion of scripture a lot in marriage counseling. I visit with couples on a regular basis about the upcoming weddings and I use this as kind of my text to, to go to and help them to understand and appreciate uh, the, the value of, of being married to somebody. I've got uh, just a couple of three verses here I want you to read. This is Ephesians chapter 5 verse 31 through 33. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband. My point was on, on this whole thing is, is a great marriage will portray a loving example of loyalty. See, Paul use the very same thing we just read over in the book of Genesis as his basis for this, this marriage about loyalty. Because how many of you know that we're in union with Christ if we're saved? Paul said, Behold, I show you a great mystery concerning Christ and His church. Loyalty is a big thing to God. How many of you know that? Amen. Well, so is it with your spouse. Your spouse needs you to be loyal to them through the tough times of life. That you, would, that you would settle it in your heart that this is the person that God brought to you and that you'd say, I've got no eyes for anybody else. My love belongs to this person right here. Just like my spiritual love belongs totally to the Lord. The devil offers a lot of things out there that people want to pursue and, and get snared up with perhaps. But I'm telling you right now, our love should be for the Lord. But we need to bring that back here. There's a sense of loyalty that's connected to us and the Lord. And that same kind of loyalty needs to be in your marriage. That you say, I am going to be with the Lord. I'm going to be with my spouse. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to break my loyalty to either one of them. I'm going to be the, the man or the woman of God that God needs me to be. That I'm going to cleave to my spouse all the days of my life or the, all the days of their life. I'm going to hold on to them. And so I pray this morning that these biblical truths that we've looked at will encourage you and help you and inspire you to be happy and whole in your, in your relationship. That you, would, that you would have it in your heart that God's plan was us to be loyal to Him, but also to show that same kind of loyalty to our spouse. So I pray that God would help each and every one of us to love Him, to honor Him the way we're supposed to, but we also love and we honor and respect our spouses the way they deserve. Please stand with me this morning. Father, we're grateful this morning for the great love that You place in our heart for You. And Lord, I recognize Your Lordship rights over my life. I realize, Lord, that as I listen to You, as I obey You, submit to You, that Lord, my life has gotten better, my marriage has gotten better, everything about it. Lord, has been better because I listen to you. 
And I don't let my flesh, I don't let my feelings overrun my faith. But Lord, I stay strong in my faith by honoring your word. So Lord, I pray this morning for any individual that is here that, that may need to establish a relationship that is built upon the solid rock, Jesus Christ. Lord, if there's somebody here that needs that salvation of the Lord, I pray that they'd come. Father, for somebody here that in their, in their marriage, they, they know they've been struggling, Lord. Maybe they'd be humble enough and willing enough this morning to just come to these altars and say, Lord, we need your help. Lord, I pray for your will to be done in this invitation. If there's just a, a somebody here that needs to be prayed for, God, may you put faith in their heart to step up and let us pray for them this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Right now the altars are open. If God puts it in your heart to come and pray, would you come and pray this morning? Maybe you need to pray for your spouse. Maybe they're not honoring the Lord and you'd like to see them see a move of God in your in your family. Would you come this morning? Used to be sad.